From here, we have a breathtaking view of Earth. And as we have already discovered, outer space continues to hold many surprises. Some planets we are about to visit may surprise you. We also have more profound insights to share. The origins of planets and stars have been unraveled. What goes around comes around, and everything has an end. The Sun is no exception. There is an exciting object living in Taurus, an invisible space. As this stellar nebula, the Crab Nebula, appears torn and furrowed, it hints at what has happened. It shows the explosion of a star. We know the Sun is a giant fusion reactor. Inside it, hydrogen and oxygen fuse. A star would be blown apart by the detonation of helium and oxygen under most circumstances. The Crab Nebula takes on a constantly changing shape because it spawns high-energy particles. It is impossible to deplete matter over billions of years because of the Sun's tremendous gravity. In the Crab's case, the Sun's gravity eventually won out. Approximately a thousand years ago, the Crab Sun exploded. The explosion was so bright that Chinese astronomers observed it during the day. During the past thousand years, the remaining core of the Crab Sun has developed into a highly dense neutron star. Sadly, our Sun, too, will one day suffer a similar fate. It should still be fine for another couple of billion years. When that day arrives, Mercury will be the first victim of the Sun. Mercury is having a hard time right now, besides the threat from the Sun. Let us not waste our time talking about it. Let us inspect instead. In a few billion years, it will all be forgotten. Mercury is the last Earth-like planet in our solar system. It also has a rocky surface. Other than that, it has few earthly characteristics. It resembles the Moon from a visual perspective. Mercury is the minor planet in our solar system, so these characteristics fit well with Mercury being the minor, regular planet. Mercury does not have an atmosphere because its surface is littered with craters. From up here, meteorites could hit Mercury. While these craters appear to be innocent footprints in the sand, a closer look reveals their proper size. They are enormous. Diameters range from 125 to 1,000 miles among the 10 largest craters. Borealis Basin has the largest diameter. An astral body with a diameter of at least 60 miles could only have caused this considerable dent. Mercury's crust was cracked by this brutal impact, allowing lava to flood the basin. A similar process formed our moon's seas of lava. Radial marks surrounding the craters show the brutal force of the meteoric impact. There are more recent and brighter meteoric rudiments around the point of impact. Mercury is also home to the so-called Rupees Cliffs, over a hundred miles long and more than a mile high, unique to Mercury. Scientists think the Rupees cross through several meteoric craters, showing that the planet may have shrunk because of these cliffs. Ring-shaped walls usually surround larger craters. Mercury may have had an overall diameter of over 200,000 square miles, four billion years ago. Though it resembles our moon, Mercury is not exactly a pleasant place to visit. The reason for this is its proximity to the Sun. As the Sun faces half of Mercury, its temperature can reach 750 degrees Fahrenheit. Temperatures can drop as low as 275 degrees at night. Mercury has the broadest range of temperatures on any planet. Its day and night cycles are equally extreme. Mercury's eccentric spin means the Sun only rises every 176 days. It is quite a long night on Mercury. Mercury circles the Sun while you wait in the dark for the morning. The Sun does at least shine brightly once it rises. Mercury is 30 million miles from the Sun, less than one-third of the distance between the Sun standing on Mercury's surface and us. Humans would be exposed to a lot of solar radiation and heat, which are highly hazardous. Thanks to our nomads, we are not exposed to these conditions. It must get warm down there now for the little guy. Mercury's comparison with the moon raises a related question. 
Can the moon be compared to Mercury? Mercury, like Venus, does not have a moon. This has led scientists to speculate that Mercury may once have orbited Venus. Such a theory can explain the irregular orbital trajectory of Mercury around the Sun. From a geometrical standpoint in the late 19th century, observing Mercury's course appears to take a generational form. Astronomers mistakenly interpreted it as proof of the existence of a previously unknown planet. Because of the evidence, they gave the phantom planet the name Vulcan. I hope they will live long and prosper through volcanic means, but that would undoubtedly have to happen elsewhere. The Helix Nebula in Aquarius would also be unlikely for their home. In the 18th century, Helix Nebula was named for its shape. Early telescopes compared the nebula to gas giants like Jupiter. Instead, it is the remnants of an exploded sun, as well as the remnants of another supernova. Stars eject the gaseous components far into space at the end of their lives. The remaining core, called a white dwarf, heats the gas particles and propels them farther and farther into space. The white dwarf is now visible as a bright spot in the middle of the galaxy. Gas particles that are blue-greenish are much more relaxed than the reddish-orange gases recently emitted. The result is like a giant eye with helix nebula. The similarity is most apparent in the infrared mode. It is an eerie sight that somehow fits the fate of that once thriving solar system. There was a massive explosion at that nebula system during which all the planets and moons were torn from their orbits. They were destroyed by gravitational forces or destroyed by the massive sun. Some comets escaped the galactic rubble. Furthermore, the Helix Nebula has an enormous eye that stares into space. The eye looks as though it is searching for the ring. Saturn's rings would be that. Saturn is the sixth planet in our solar system, located almost one billion miles from Earth. Saturn can be seen from Earth by the naked eye, proving that Saturn is a pretty giant planet. A simple telescope shows it about 75,000 miles in diameter, making it the second largest planet in our solar system. The orbit of Saturn is one of the most remarkable features of this planet. Saturn's rings have been a symbol of science fiction, astronomy and space exploration since the stylized rendition of Saturn with its rings appeared. Saturn is a part of this disk. We can distinguish between several sharply defined rings as we get closer, each Saturn ring has a different colour tone depending on its composition. There are over 100,000 rings around Saturn. Each ring is visible. The gaps between them are easily discernible. We can see their material composition when we get close to the rings. The rings are asteroid fields circling the planet. There was a diverse range of compounds in these rings, some as small as grains of sand. Saturn's smaller moons pass right through these rings. Shepherd moons are called their orbits ensuring the rings remain in reasonable shape. Sadly, we cannot set foot on Saturn. This is because the gas giant does not have a surface. Its atmosphere is primarily hydrogen and helium, near the planet's core. Pressure rises to enormous levels, causing the gases to liquefy. The only thing we can do is send our nomads into the outer atmosphere. Saturn has two layers of space. Because of the density of the outer layer, the lower layer is not even visible, making this sight relatively rare. We are now closing in on the whirlwind at the South Pole, a hurricane with a fixed position and a diameter of 5,000 miles. As with the South Pole, the North Pole also offers a distinctive feature, a polar vortex shaped like neat hexagons. There are several hundred miles of depth to this phenomenon, which spans over 15,000 miles. We would waste our chance if we failed to land somewhere since our nomad is already here. Saturn has 62 moons, some of which are enormous. Their diameter ranges from 500 to 1,000 miles. That is half the size of our moon. And it also looks familiar. Rhea is exposed to temperatures of minus 275 to minus 360 degrees Fahrenheit. The atmosphere of Rhea is fragile due to gas emissions. Ice covers two-thirds of its surface. Like Earth's moon, the surface is littered with craters, but the cavities appear softer. This is because Rhea's crust is more flexible than our moon. Likewise, it is composed of ice, though it has more prominent craters. Rhea's sister moon, Dione, has similar characteristics. Rhea can be compared to Dione since these two moons resemble each other closely. 
The Odysseus crater is the most striking feature of theatres. Because of the orientation of the crater, it covers nearly 40% of the surface. A cold eruption may also have contributed to the light stripes. Theatrical productions might recall one of the deadliest battle stations in science fiction. Enceladus consists almost entirely of water ice, reflecting 99% of all sunlight entering. A large part of its icy surface is reddish. There is still no clear understanding of how this pattern developed. It is possible that different colours of material emerge from within Iapetus because of volcanic activity or meteoric impact. There is also a rift spanning over 800 miles on the Iapetus. This formation looks like a walnut from a certain angle and is up to 8 miles high. Tectonic activity and an asteroid ring's remains have been proposed to explain this anomaly. Our solar system's most reflective astral body is Enceladus. Enceladus's cryovolcanic geysers keep the surface fresh by spitting out ice formations of up to 300 miles in height, another source of its ever-new look. Organic chemicals were very abundant in the discharged material. Among these organic materials, life cannot exist without water and moderate temperatures. Warmer temperatures are the only thing keeping insulators from surviving. It is an exciting discovery. But our last stop will highlight our quick tour of the moons. Saturn's largest moon is a big guy. Titan resembles Earth, making it possibly the most significant planet in our solar system besides Mercury. Titan has several additional features that make it appear like a fully grown planet. Not just an Earth-like world, but a fully grown planet, a body in our solar system that is the most like Earth. The only moon known to have a dense atmosphere is Titan, which has a diameter of 3,200 miles. There are many clouds in this atmosphere, primarily composed of nitrogen, although traces of carbon hydride and other organic ingredients are also present. At Titan's surface, various hydrocarbons, including methane and ethane, are present in the clouds. At minus 275 degrees Fahrenheit, the average temperature is low. Titan's landscapes are remarkably like those on Earth. Xanadu, which is approximately the size of Australia, is along the equator. Mountain ranges reach up to one mile in height here. Because of the low temperatures, the ice crystals took their current shape due to water ice being washed down by methane rain. This dense ice is like silica rock in density. It contains no water, of course. Instead, it contains pools and even seas of methane. Desert-like areas dominated by dunes contrast with the methane seas. Wind most likely formed these landscapes like dunes on Earth. Sand particles intended for miles long and 500 feet high are easily shaped by winds as low as 2 miles per hour. The sand particles are approximately a tenth of an inch wide. They are organic materials that dried after raining on Titan. Considering all the similarities to Earth, life is not impossible. Water-based life forms cannot exist because of the cold. Hydrogen-based life forms might be possible on Earth, based on recent discoveries. On Titan, hydrogen is practically everywhere. On Titan, there may be microscopic aliens like bacteria and microbes. In the past or the future, they may have existed. It is unknown. I think it is about time we send a few more rovers up there to explore under every ice rock. The spark that ignites life cannot be pinpointed with certainty. All life is part of an eternal cycle, and that is certain. The same applies to suns. When one star explodes, a shock wave carries tremendous energy through space. The Crab Nebula, for example, was equivalent to 100,000 full suns. These same energies are now fueling the formation of new stars and planets. Even material shot out of dying suns forms cosmic nebulas, later becoming art and planets. In this way, the universe is created. Stunning sights result from this process, so why not watch some of them unfold? For instance, the American Nebula is named for its resemblance to the North American continent. However, the whole thing appears utterly different in infrared view, but no less fascinating. The Rose Nebula provides an additional visual experience at 407 light-years away. This is the closest star factory to Earth. 300,000 years is the average age of the 300 suns we find here. From a star's perspective, that makes them babies. The oldest discovered stars date back over 12 billion years. Jupiter is the giant planet in our solar system and has over 80 moons to look at. According to scientists, our sun 
was born in a dense, star-forming region, such as the Pleiades, and then moved to its current location. It is easy to see the Pleiades from Earth, also known as the Seven Sisters. They are therefore the subject of many old legends and scriptures. About a hundred million years ago, dinosaurs roamed the Earth and created these songs. This makes the Pleiades younger than our Sun, which has about five billion years on the meter. As we look at our solar system, we see the Sun, the eight planets and their moons, some asteroids, and the dwarf planet Ceres at the outermost reaches of the Kuiper Belt. More dwarf planets and many, many asteroids. There is a part of the Milky Way visible in our night sky. The diameter of this area is over four and seven billion miles. In one sense it sounds enormous, but in another sense it is just a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. In rural areas with little light pollution, it appears like a brush of milky fog in the sky. We see the light of millions of distant stars, they all belong to our galaxy, derived from the Greek word for Milky Way. Ancient Greeks believed that their chief god created the Milky Way. Zeus made Aaron breastfeed Heracles to make his son Heracles breastfeed. The infant has pushed away, causing some milk to spill across the sky. As we live inside the Milky Way, the streak we see in our night sky is only a tiny fraction of the Milky Way. It is impossible to photograph the Milky Way in its entirety. Scientists have figured out what our Milky Way looks like from observations, calculations and in comparisons with other galaxies. Two spiral arms characterize it. Bright stars occupy these arms to a surprising degree. We are far from the galactic center. We can find it to the southeast of this diagram. There are about 100,000 light years between each of the stars in our galaxy. It would take 100,000 years for us to travel from one end to the other. If we traveled at light speed, around 671 million miles an hour. This defines our imagination. I will scale it down so that we can better grasp it. Imagine our galaxy is 10 miles across. In that case, our solar system would be the width of a single strand of hair. It would barely be visible to the naked eye, and our Earth would be the size of an atom. Do we not need to consider how small we are before we get dizzy imagining how vast the Milky Way is, or how tiny we are? Compared to the Milky Way, how small are we? Let us inspect. The scales are still hard to grasp here. Uranus is approximately 3 billion kilometers away. A supersonic jet would take at least 200 years to cover that distance. Considering their many similarities, Earth and Venus are sister planets. Indeed, Neptune is twinned with Venus. Neptune is classified as Uranus. They can be confused easily because they are twins. Unlike Neptune, which appears deep blue, Uranus appears light blue with a hint of green. Neptune appears similarly light blue. Neptune and Uranus are more affluent in water, ammonia and methane than Saturn and Jupiter's other two gas giants. As methane absorbs red light in the atmosphere, it determines the color. Therefore, they belong to this subclass of ice giants. Further, Uranus is blisteringly cold, so it makes sense. No matter what type, only Uranus has an internal heat source for unknown reasons. Its energy comes from the Sun, which is not much considering it is two billion miles away. Because of Uranus's moderate amount of heat reaching its atmosphere, reaches only four hundredths of Earth's total energy. The planet has fewer weather effects than Neptune. Occasionally, there are large cloud bands as large as 18,000 miles, but these dissolve quickly. There is a possibility that Uranus's inner cold had something to do with the horrendous meteor strike. This conclusion is based on Uranus's axis is severely tilted. So when we look at Uranus from Earth in this way, we mostly see it from the top down. Rings encircle the planet like an archery target, while the moon circles around it like hands on a clock. Gas giants have rings, and Uranus's rings are like Neptune's. They are composed of microscopic dark particles. May and Nye's rings are distinctive because their composition appears slightly red and blue, respectively. The other rings are dark grey. There are some here, and the shepherd moons, which keep the curls in shape. Twenty-seven moons orbit Uranus, ranging from six to a thousand miles. Their small sizes make them relatively lightweight. Neptune's moon Triton alone weighs more than they do together. Miranda, Ariel, Umbral, Titania and Oberon are all similar and can be viewed as miniature versions of our moon. 
Miranda is most interesting because she has a very different surface structure, including heavy displacements, fragmentation patterns, and a labyrinth of cannons that stretches up to 12 miles deep. Miranda is a unique astral body within our solar system because of this. There are several theories about how these formations were created. Miranda travelled once into the gravitational reach of Umbral and Ariel. These forces heated her since she was 80% water ice. This resulted in considerable tectonic effects. After some time, Miranda broke free from those forces to assume her current orbit around Uranus. I do not know about you, but I feel somewhat disappointed by Uranus. It has no actual surface. The weather on the moons is not very impressive either. Compared to the moon, that is. I think we deserve a treat now. Additionally, space offers plenty of opportunities for that. Since we have been looking at our Milky Way today, I will show you some of the most striking distant galaxies. First, let us look at Messier 74. The galaxy is shaped like a spiral, just like our own. M74, however, has bright pink areas along its arms. These are clouds of gases illuminated by young stars. Much ultraviolet light is produced in these regions, hence the pink colour. The appearance of Messier 66, the enormous galaxy of the Leo triplets, is far more asymmetrical. Because of the gravitational pull of its two nearby siblings, its appearance has been shifted, at least in galactic terms. As galaxies drift through space, some stunning compositions are possible. This pair of galaxies is known as ARP273. Scientists believe that the smaller universe has passed through the broader one in a couple of billion years and created a rose-like form. Possibly Andromeda and our galaxy will crash into each other. Antenna galaxies have also collided. A collision between these galaxies created billions of brand new suns, most of them in tightly packed groups called superstar clusters. Those were some fantastic images. The galaxies are too far away to be seen. That prevents us from getting closer to them. There is still one major planet in our Milky Way that is almost a solar system. Where does this come from? You will see. We are currently visiting Jupiter, the giant planet in our system. Jupiter alone weighs more than all the other planets combined. Despite being 480 million miles away, it is one of the brightest objects in the night sky. Long before the invention of the telescope, it was named after the Roman god Jupiter. Known as the King Star by the Babylonians, Jupiter reigns over its miniature realm with its 63 moons, some as large as planets. It is almost like a solar system unto itself. Jupiter probably would have ignited and become a sun if it had accumulated a bit more mass. While that would have been spectacular, it has not happened. But Jupiter has rings. They are not spectacular, but they are there. The particles are almost as small as cigarette smoke. Most of the grains are black, so they are challenging to see. The grains are composed of dust from the nearby moons. Because of their low gravity, these moons produce dust when meteors hit them. The debris blows out into Jupiter's orbit, resulting in the critical ring comprising dust from interstellar and heavenly bodies. Another interesting fact is that the rings move closer to Jupiter in a spiral motion. Dust particles are slowed down by the planet's magnetic field, which is very strong. As a result, Jupiter will swallow up the rings. The colourful atmosphere of the planet resembles a marbled rock as we study it. A hull of gas surrounds the planet almost entirely. As with all gas giants, they become liquefied because of the rising pressure as they descend towards their cores. This core is composed of rock and ice and is about 20 times heavier than Earth. We cannot land on Jupiter, so let us look at the atmosphere instead. Cloud bands parallel to the equator are the most distinctive feature. Then there is the big red spot, a gigantic whirlwind with a fixed location. The wind speed inside can reach 370 miles per hour, and its diameter is three times Earth's. Its existence was first recorded in 1664. Jupiter has two sharply separated cloud layers. Its outer atmosphere affords us a fascinating view. Different temperatures separate the two cloud layers. Jupiter's magnetic field is also impressive. Jupiter's magnetic field is enormous. Magnetism is 14 times stronger than Earth's magnetic fields, and its outer measurable limits almost reach Saturn. 
Although you cannot directly see a magnetic field, interference with Jupiter's main moons causes massive auroras at the North Pole. Jupiter's magnetic field shields these four moons from solar radiation. The moon appears more inviting because of this. We had to work hard to make our nomads' electronics work in this environment. Callisto, Jupiter's most distant moon, is millions of kilometers away. It is a beautiful moon. It looks like our moon from such a distance. Watch. As we inch closer to Jupiter, we come across Ganymede, a planet with a diameter of over 3,700 miles. This is our solar system's giant moon. It is far more significant than Mercury. Mercury's crater-littered surface in its fragile atmosphere looks pretty similar to its own. Next, on our whirlwind tour, is I. It orbits Jupiter at 250,000 miles and takes 42 hours to complete one orbit from a great distance. It is more visually appealing because of different surface area types. The most prominent structures on its surface are volcanoes and lava pools of enormous dimensions. It almost looks like it was painted with an extensive brush. It is like a hellish moon. Liquid sulfur covers the entire planet in various aggregate states, from gaseous to liquid to solid. It gives Iowa a very colorful appearance, with yellow being the dominant color. Despite only being separated by 20 years, photographs of the surface of Io show vastly unique features. It becomes more apparent why its surface is subject to the constant change experienced by all bodies in our solar system. Io has the most volcanic activity. Continuous eruptions send lava up to 180 miles into the air at 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. There are also rivers of lava with temperatures of up to 3,500 degrees Fahrenheit and lava pools up to 250 miles wide. The rivers flow hundreds of miles. Despite the heat generated by the volcanoes, Io's average surface temperature is only minus 236 degrees Fahrenheit. This is a harsh environment. If there is life on Io, it will have to be tough as nails. It is still exciting. Europa lies 370,000 miles away from Jupiter and six miles thick with an ice crust. Europa looks a lot like Neptune's moon Triton. The atmosphere of Europa is mainly made up of oxygen. Red colouring results from minerals accumulating in the atmosphere. Europa's surface is among the smoothest and youngest in the world. There are hardly any structures higher than 300 feet above the ground. However, the chaotic network of ridges and trenches is visually striking. The so-called lines are up to 12 miles wide and remind me strongly of Earth's ice fields. Oceans of liquid water lie beneath the icy crust of Europa. Because geological processes cannot explain the positions and alignments of the linear, they serve as a clue to one of the biggest mysteries of our solar system. It interacts with the surface, and the line is created because of the irregular orbit of Europa. The intense tidal forces affect the ice and heat it. So it is time to drill and activate nomad submarine mode. Organic chemicals, water and warmth are necessary for creating life, and these elements are present in Europa's ocean on Earth. Some organisms can survive without sunlight. Life forms such as these are very primitive, like microbes or passive organisms. According to some theories, cosmic radiation may cause Europa's water to release oxygen. Waters here may already be more oxygen-rich than our earthly oceans, which would meet the requirements.
Marlina.